colleagues, my name is possible and I'll be your tutor for today. In our previous lecture, we ended with the law of demand, but that when we look at the theory, I hope it makes sense. So we said that theory is a written aspect or written part of economics. It's a written part of economics, which represents the real world situation. I hope it makes sense. Now the model, the model is a diagrammatical or it is a tabular or mathematical or functional representation of economic theory. So in way back in SHS, now way back in SHS, sometimes when they are giving us questions, they say that with the aid of a diagram. Now whenever you see that particular question, the diagram which is coming into it represents the economic model. And then with the aid of a diagram, explain this. The explanation also represents the theory. Sometimes they also say that um, with the aid of a table or mathematical function, or sometimes they even they, they, don't, they don't even say that they put a mathematical function there, equation there, or a formula there for you to solve it. That one also is the mathematical or the functional. And then diagrammatica is the with the aid of a diagram curves. And then we have shadow. Shadow talks about table. So we are saying that the model is a shadow or tabular or diagrammatica or mathematical representation of economic theory. So it is the theory that we are representing it in a tabular form or in a curve or in a mathematical form. I hope you have seen the difference between the model and the theory. God bless you. Now, having understood the model and the theory, we are going to look at the model form of the demand law or the law of demand. Now, using a table, which is the first one. Now, before you be able to understand this, you should be able to understand two concepts. That is the types of demand. The first type or the one of the types of demand is individual demand. And the second one is market demand. Now listen to me carefully. The demand, the, the shadow for, or the demand shadow for an individual type of demand will be different from the, 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 the demand shadow for a market type of demand. I hope it makes sense. And so as the rest. Now, we are looking at the individual before we come to the market. So the first one is individual individual demand so individual demand now the individual demand individual demand for that one we are saying that price is here price is here and then quantity demanded is here and we are saying that quantity demand or demand that depends on price Signifying that when price changes, quantity demanded will also change. So at the extreme price, quantity demanded is equal to zero. No one is going to buy it. And when the price decreases to eight Ghana cities, yes, price Ghana cities, and here is units. When the price decreases to eight Ghana cities, consumers are consuming, let me say, four units. When the price comes to six Ghana, Consumers are consuming 10 units. When the price comes down to 4, consumers are consuming um, 18 units. When the price is 0, they are consuming 100 units. Now from here, we are saying that economic model must give respect to the economic theory. So any economic model that deviates from economic theory is not economic model so economic model must prove the economic theory so from the law of demand which says that when price increases quantity demanded comes down let us look at that one here when price is equal to zero quantity demand is 100 when price increased to four Ghana cities quantity demanded became what 18 and when price increased again to six Ghana cities quantity demanded also decreased to 10 units so looking at this demand shadow, we could see that it proves, it also confirms the law of demand, which is the theory. Then what therefore is the demand shadow? 
Demand shedding is a table of representation of the quantity demanded of, or a table of representation of the quantity that consumers are willing and are able to patronize at a particular crisis at a given period of time. So you 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 just do some small editing on the definite um, on the law of demand or on the definition of demand. So you take the you you take a portion of it and then you place it by the table of representation. I hope it makes sense. So you said it is the table of representation. God bless you for that. So that is the demand shadow. Now the second one is um, diagrammatical or demand curve. I hope it makes sense. But before then, let me let me dash you something. Assuming the question says you have to calculate for total revenue. Total revenue. Total revenue is equal to price times quantity. So you multiply here by here. 10 times 0. So it is in Ghana cities. Right? Price times quantity. 10 times 0 will be 0. This time this. You know that I, I hope it will be somewhere 32. This time this will be 60. And then you do the rest. I hope it makes sense. That is the demand shadow. The next one is diagrammatical. Demand curve. Demand curve. Now we are saying that the demand curve is a curve. It's a curve that shows the relationship between quantity demand and price. I hope it makes sense. So this is the demand curve. This is the demand curve. Here is quantity demanded. And here is price. Here is zero. I hope it makes sense. That is the demand curve. And then you write here demand. I hope it makes sense. Now look at it carefully. You can see that the demand curve is linear. It is a line. It is linear. It is a line. And don't forget that this one is a Cartesian plane. When you say Cartesian plane, you might have forgotten it. This one, way back in SHS, graph. This is a Cartesian plane. I hope it makes sense. So we are saying that the Cartesian plane, but here we are, we are assuming that here is positive and here is positive. That is why it is coming here. That is why it is coming here. I hope it makes sense. Good. Now, having understood this one, let us look at some important future here. Now, we have this. We want to prove to see whether the demand model using the diagrammatical or the curve also proves the law of demand using the theory. Because we are saying that the model must not deviate from the theory. So when the price is 10 Ghana CDs, quantity demand, when the price is 10 Ghana CDs, quantity demanded is zero. And when the price came down to 8 Ghana CDs, quantity demanded became 4 units. When the price came down to 6 Ghana CDs, quantity demanded also came down to 10. And then you continue the rest. I hope it makes sense. So we could see that the demand curve for individual demand, for individual demand, also proves the law of demand. I hope it makes sense. Now we are going to look at the mathematical or the functional type. And that one, watch out for our next lecture. Because that one entails a lot. So I need not to load you with a lot of things here. In our next lecture, we are going to look at how to use the mathematical or the functional format in order to deduce the law, um, in order to prove the theory, which is the law of demand. But before I leave you, don't forget that I told you that the demand curve is linear. It is a line in nature. And once it is a line in nature, don't forget the law or the formula for equation of a line. The formula for equation of a line. That is y equal to mx plus c. This one also could be written as y equal to minus c minus c plus mx. I hope it makes sense. This one also could be written as y equal to c are you there? Minus mx. So put it at the back of your mind. So anticipatory you should be hoping that the formula or the function for demand must follow this format because demand curve is linear and it must follow the equation of a line. 
Once again, my name is Possible. Thank you. Bye.